Hello. Hey, Christopher. How's it going? Going very well. Very well. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing very well. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Happy Halloween to you as well. Are you going to go out and get your trick-or-treat on, Jen? You know? <laughs> well, actually, last night I, I had a get-together with some friends, so, yeah. Huh. Did you participate in, now do you know that the night before Halloween is traditionally known as mischief night? Oh, really? Okay, well, we did not create any mischief. <laughs> when, when I was a kid in Philly, we would just go up and like, you know, ring people's doorbells. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that, did, that kind of mischief. Ditch, right? right? Right, there you go. There you go. But it was like the night before or something. But, I remember, uh, uh, yeah, growing up, there used to be uh you know, those rowdy kids who would, uh, I think it was called TPing someone's house where they would uh, throw yes. toilet paper toilet in the paper. tree. <laughs> that, had, that had to be something. The worst is when it would rain. And then oh, it yeah. would be as easy as getting it out because then it would be all like stuck on the trees and leaves and stuff. And you know, somebody was mad. You yeah, know, or I, actually, I think I'm they would be- also like throw eggs at people's cars and stuff. <laughs> yeah, those, those were like the the jerkier ones, you know, the eggs yeah. and stuff, kind of like uh, some toilet paper, you know, that's funny. Eggs. Yeah. <laughs> that's so that's Yeah. Funny. Well, I'm really excited to chat with you. I, I'm really loving the album. Your I'm self glad. your debut self-titled album. Yes. Um I'm glad you're digging it, Jen. I, I put a as uh, they say down south, I put my foot into it, you know. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> so, did, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I really tried to really showcase um, the different, m- music for me is like textures and shades and stuff like that and different variables of each. And just every day is not going to have you feeling heavy like that, 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 that. Mm-hmm. Every day won't have you funky. So with the Nevolutionaries, I was very intentional in making sure it was vibey and wavy and it kind of went, you know, because there's something that, like an Aerosmith album per se, if you don't like that one vibe, like they had back in the day, right? You didn't like it, you were done. Because it was one vibe. But with my stuff, I tried to, like life, just bring different influences, those shades, those textures. Just to make it more interesting. You know, no, because, I, I really like that. Yeah, because yeah, I could us. Uh, it was like a good mixture of you know, kind of like nineties, kind of cut grunge, I guess. But mm-hmm. then there's also elements of like psychedelic rock, and I don't know if you would say like punk rock, but you know, I feel like there's some elements of punk in there as well. Okay, I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> that, that is a part of. Uh, or maybe hard a, rock or something. Yeah, hard rock. It, it, it has some added, it, it has a bit more of like, not like the, the, the angst per se, but it does have a little attitude to it. Yeah, you know? that, I guess that's what I meant, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, it, not like the misfits or anything, or not misfits. Um, what was, what was their name? Ah, uh, what was that punk rock, um, from England? I'm totally, mi- uh, like yes, yeah, Sex Pistols. Thank you. <laughs> I was totally blanking on their name for a second. Yeah, but um, do you know that they were actually put together by like a guy who was like doing like a bunch of fashion stuff and wanted to launch something to go along with the scene? Oh, really? Oh, um, wow! It's almost almost like how they do boy bands. Ah, uh, yeah. Together, but it's just like a dirty boy band. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I would explain it based on their attitude. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, but you're, you're not getting any of that here. This is you know what what I do just comes from my comes from my heart. You know, yeah. at the bottom of the day, it's something that's true to me. And rather than kind of jump on to what the next trend was, and then it shifts by the time you record music geared towards it you know then you're stuck back at square one where if you kind of stick with your thing you know people throw the 90s thing in there and it's the grunge it's like i i hear it 
because it was like a it was an influence at a time but life kind of puts different influences in there like i have that big shoegazy thing that i really love mm -hmm. like i've loved just really psychedelic far out music that has that kind of transcendent quality to it where it takes you somewhere you know and for a second you're like hey where was i okay no back. exactly you kind of lose yourself in the song mm -hmm. and that's that's beautiful in the sense of how music provides a sense of escape for people you know i mean i remember at different points in my life from when i was a little kid to a teenager to beyond Music was like a refuge, a friend when you're out of town and you put on your headphones and you listen to your favorite album and it makes it a bit better. You know, absolutely, so, yeah. So, yeah, kind of like uh in that Queen song Radio Gaga, where they have that lyric, my oldest friend through teenage nights, you know. Uh-huh. Exactly, exactly. It's something that to each person the beauty of music in all art is there's individual interpretation. So something that you hear in a song, you might get exactly what the artist is trying to say. And like, I wonder if anyone's going to get this. And then someone else from an all different set of experiences will have something, another interpretation, you know, and they're both viable and awesome because it's, that's the beauty of the, of the song, you know, is being able to, showcase that and let it mean something to people you know because you know they don't make any more time so the time we have is very precious mm -hmm. and i feel like creating like literally before i started talking with you i was recording something up to the last moment oh wow <laughs> but i always like to when i hear something in my head i try to you know make it come into fruition and that's like one of my greatest joys of life, really. So I guess people hear that it comes from a real place. So that's really cool. Yeah. I'm sure like as soon as you have an idea in your head, you don't want to lose it. So you try to record it as soon as you can. Well, sometimes, or it could be an idea I've had laying around for a year. And I just couldn't think of a hook or think of a bridge that would really serve the purpose of the song and making it as cool as it can be and i'll hear something like there it is there it is and other times like a couple nights ago i woke up and i kind of i guess it's dreaming songs like i hear rhythms and vibes and kind of textures and if i'm lucky enough to pull my stuff out of sleep I can kind of uh, pick up my phone and kind of record it into it mm -hmm. and then come back to it at a later time. And what I like is like, I forget about it for months and then I come back and I'm like, oh shit, what's that? Oh, oh, <laughs> okay. But at the time I was kind of groggy or tired or whatever and was, really wasn't into it, but that's where there's like so much magic in, into it from all parts. Like, I wrote a song once back in the day and I think I was doing a radio interview and someone enjoys it. And someone said that they were listening to that song and that's when they gave, where they conceived their child. Wow. <laughs> I was like, wow. And I've actually had a baby uh, start to be delivered at a, during our set at a festival in North Carolina a few years back. And it's little stuff like that. Yeah. You know, little things like to some people, it was like they were hanging out they, with their friends and they were drunk and they saw a show. To other people, they could have seen what was happening there and it could have meant something. To that kid, you know, he could have been named Rock and Roll Junior or something, you know, because he was born <laughs> like, at a concert or something like that. So it makes it really, that's the, that's the magic about it. It it's really something. is. And is that Jupiter behind you? It or which planet? Yeah. Yes, it is. Oh, okay. So, wow, I know my those planets. Are, <laughs> those are planets. I've, I've really, I've always, ever since I was a little kid, I've just been fascinated by the stars and 
outer space and maybe things that are out in space that are coming here or oh no I, I swear every night i see some sort of ufo and then my friends think i'm crazy but i'm like i swear it was not a plane <laughs> it was something weird <laughs> you, you know it's really interesting but i've seen a couple things a few times during my life about four or five and each time i was with more than three people so it wasn't just me hanging out and like, I was hanging out back, man. I just had, like, eight Coronas, dude. But I looked up, and all of a sudden, it wasn't anything like that. It's like hanging out with people who might be going out to have some Coronas. But mm -hmm. it was other people kind of witnessing it, and you know, because I've spent a lot of time on the North Carolina coast in uh, Wilmington, more specifically Wrightsville Beach. And they have this pier down there. And one time I was hanging out and with other friends, and there was, you know, approaching dusk but we still had a little bit of visibility and there were just these a couple of lights that were just like flying around and we were looking at each other and it's like i'm not going to say anything but and we all went back to the house and no one really said anything about it we just continued to kind of like listen to music and no oh, that didn't happen yeah we all didn't just see that so <laughs> i just you know it's and for all I know, it could be something that's like, you know, there's also a lot of government bases down there. Mm -hmm. you know? And there's technology and they have to test it at some point. And if they're not giving everyone, we're not, you know, we didn't get the memo per se. So how do we know what's going on? So it could be something that they, I don't know, but it's, it's different. It's different. And when you got yeah. like that. <laughs> oh, Barack Obama, he's, you know, kind of really interestingly like, well, I'm not supposed to say, I'm like, not supposed to say what? If there's nothing, nothing you weren't supposed to say, it wouldn't be anything not to say. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> By not so. saying anything, they're saying a lot. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, that's a, a, a interesting thing in the times that we live in. And as you know, these are very curious times, so. It's a, a really great time to uh, to make music for sure. I actually started uh, digging into uh, Neverlutionaries too, as I'm going ah. to call it, and I think I'm done with about seventy five percent of it. But it's going to be I'm I'm really proud of it so far. I got some really great great songs on there that are captured some great moments, and I really hope. Folks will dig it. And I have uh, Rick Mamey from the Brian Jones Town Massacre playing guitar on one song on the track. And uh, Nick Baglio, who's just a phenom of a drummer. And uh, he's playing on it. And uh, it's, just, it's just coming along so well, better than anything I could have imagined. You know, because when this came out, Corona happened. Mm -hmm. So the process came to a crawl and I'm always writing and creating you know so I kind of just kept moving forward and I've kind of written like two records since then so I'm oh, kind wow. of going between the two of them and picking out which might be the best and I've entertained doing a double one but that could be uh some would say that is audacious but like I said you know, time is limited if we got it. And if you have it in you, why not put it out? You know, so that's something else I'm going to entertain. Yeah, but I mean, I feel like back in the early 2000s, a lot of people released double albums. There was like, kind of like each album was a different concept. And mm -hmm. they would package it. Like you could mm -hmm. either buy them separately or together. Mm -hmm. And I, I love that idea because it's like, I don't know. It's music. Music is so timeless, and there's so much beauty wrapped into it. And then you take the marketing thing, which it, it has to exist because if it's not marketed, it doesn't get out there. You know, mm -hmm. I'm preaching to the choir myself, but it's like it's like a singles kind of environment, really. Yeah, right now it is definitely. You know, and that's why with this, I was very conscious on. I wanted it to be like an old school record that you could put it on 
put your headphones on, kick back, and just like listen to the whole thing. And like go on like the little trip that I'm trying to take people on and just enjoy it. You know, it's like, wow, that was cool where you can take them out of context by listening to them separately. And hopefully they still hold up. But that's part of like the magic of, you know, it's like great plays aren't shown with just one scene. Right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to get several scenes to paint the picture correctly. So that's what I'm trying to do. Oh, I, I love that. And kind of speaking of, you know, records, like vinyl records, um, I don't know about where you are, but in Boston, they're becoming popular again with younger crowds. And I think it's because of the listening experience where you put it on and you can just kind of lay back and enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, because life now is so hurried and rushed that it's like next single, next single, next single, next single. And the whole thing, you're, you're, you're committing to time. You're committing to that experience. You know, you're committing to like, hey, I'm going to check this whole thing out. And then you have to get up and flip it over. <laughs> start the other side. And there's something about human beings and rituals that make us happy. And that's a ritual. That was something, you know, that, you know, I'm old school. I grew up on that. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember getting like a Kiss record when I was a little kid and just holding it up and like, like, wow, what's that? And getting and looking at the artwork. And, yeah, that's one of my favorite things is looking at the artwork. And, and you're like, what are they, what were they doing when they came up with this? And, and nowadays the way it's fed because the uh, public essentially has a, a tension span of a titsy fly. Yep. <laughs> you have to see people very quickly and sometimes you miss very important things when you do them. Certain things are deserving of time. You know, to take and invest in it and to have to really get into stuff. <clears throat> That's when I've had bands like really grow on me is when I took the time to to listen to their whole catalog and certain albums and it's just a beautiful thing. You know, it, it takes, that's part of like going back to that magic. There's such magic into it. Like from watching a little kid get the music bug, like when they start liking their songs and they're like, you know what, I want to wear all black. You know, my parents, I'm sure, <laughs> uh, <laughs> they had like a typical kind of Southern Baptist thing going. And I was like, and, you know, Metallica and punk rock, you know, since I was old enough to choose what I was listening to, I've always been, I don't know, I've always kind of been like the rocker kind of kid. You know, that was just me. It wasn't a phase. <laughs> <laughs> what like, kind of drew you to rock music? Was it kind of like the attitude of it? There was an honesty. There was a intensity, there was an urgency, and I guess even though I was younger, there I kind of went through some stuff, and I could identify with a lot of stuff, and it was like a sense of home outside of myself that I could always visit, you know, and it like on multiple times, like music saved my life. Because I've had friends that have like died of overdoses mm -hmm. and just taking that wrong path in life. And I was always wanting to push myself and get better. So I would go to the party, but I, you know, I would come home so I could rehearse and I could practice. And, you know, I could get better and work on my skills. And then, you know, it was like the same thing when I started playing guitar to when. You know, originally I started out as a bass player and then, you know, singing was something I've been doing since literally I was a, ch a child. But it's just, uh, it's just a beautiful thing. I wouldn't change the experience of going through all of that. And I wouldn't change for a thing in the world. No, definitely. I feel like uh, rock music, it's just the best medicine, you know? <laughs> Yeah, it's something just like you can therapy. always turn to. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, 
everyone's had that time where they've just felt like this going, ah, screaming. And sometimes there's nothing better therapeutically than doing that on a consistent basis. <laughs> it's like you're, you're, go, you're going to, you know, you're going to get your help. You're letting it, you're letting it out. You're letting out of your spirit. You're, also, it's about celebrating the spirit, you know, it's, and letting people know that they're not the only ones, you know, because that's the thing about it. It's like the thing people say, well, you know what? You're not the only one going through it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes going through that, that's the last damn thing you want to hear. But from a spiritual point, it's a beautiful thing because going back to that individual interpretation of the art or the music, everyone could take from it what they take from it due to their circumstances happening the way they did, you know, but you get something from it. Definitely. I love it. And your latest single, um, Stardusted, that kind of touches upon modern love. <laughs> it, right? Yes, <laughs> yes it does, in, in a sense. Yeah, it's... um. That's an interesting little song, you know. Sometimes I write from experience that I've been through personally. Sometimes I write from things that I've witnessed from afar, get close up to. Uh, And that was a little combination of a few things, just like, actually, you know, kind of, I was really kind of into someone way, way more than they were into me. It was more like, hey, this is kind of like, and I was like, oh wow. I was all star dusted, aka blown away. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, she was like, we don't have to call it love. And I was like, well, that's a weird thing to say when I thought about it. I was like, oh, oops. Oh, oh. okay. Hmm. I have to remember that. And then when I was writing that song, writing the lyrics to it, it kind of uh that situation kind of jumped into my mind and just how sometimes as long as you're feeling something because we live in a world where a lot of people don't feel Mm -hmm. they exist but they don't feel that's sad Um, emotions are passe and secondary Mm -hmm. where they should be at the forefront of our existence you know so stardusted is like a nice homage to modern love yep (laughs) Yeah, I feel like we're kind of in an era where labels, I guess, people don't want to kind of use them or something. I don't, I, I definitely see like a change in the dating world these days. It, it's so confusing. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Especially with dating apps, you know, that just makes it more confusing. Yes, when you date the representative of the person they're kind of representing when they're trying to represent themselves <laughs> right <laughs> it's a lot of removal and removal and removal so it's you know it's 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 in the, it's tricky you know it, it's it's not like the old soda shop malt shop days yeah where you just you know meet someone <laughs> <Hang out>. naturally <laughs> I, I like it how the uh the italian folks would do it when you know they would kind of when they had a couple dating like the elders kind of be right behind them hanging out <laughs> a few feet back enough to give them you know out of earshot but enough to hear anything curious and enough right. to make sure they're taken care of but you also you know you know when you have that kind of investment into someone's life and to their things you have a person that comes out a bit better because they know somebody cares like think about it like even like you probably know a couple of crazy people a couple of friends that are a little bit different a little off the chain and it's all because of a lack of love, a lack of something they didn't get. That yeah. Somebody else got. Like, I was lucky. It's like, I grew up and I got hugs every day from my mom, you know? And she told me I could be whatever I wanted to be. And she was always, you know, just always super positive until this day, to yesterday, giving me great advice and pushing me forward, you know? Aww. And life is tricky as hell enough and I've been through a bunch of crazy stuff and I had the support and I had the backup so I feel for the people that don't have that you know that don't have that and it's something a lot of people take for granted 
Mm -hmm. so it's not going it's still till it's gone and then they're like well damn that was that was really different you know so it's about those moments and experiencing the moments and living in those moments and going, you know what this time right here is really freaking awesome and i'm gonna hold it dear so no, I'm, definitely. On hippie, I'm on some hippie shit so you have to forgive me but it, it no i i definitely agree and um that's why it's so sad like when i you know, take the subway in Boston, or I, I just walk in the city and everyone's staring at their phone. It's like, come on, you know, there's a real world here. Enjoy the time you have on this planet instead of just living your life through the phone, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know if they have internet in the afterlife, so a lot of folks are going to be a little shocked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's um like a I spent a lot of time in San Francisco and I remember first getting there and when I was first hanging out and getting my feel for the city and people were just more engaged with each other, you know, more conversations in places I was going and hanging out from like hanging out at Dolores Park to going, at a, going to a club, people were talking to each other and, you know, the last time I was there a couple of months back, it was just, you know, of course, with the corona weirds going on, it's different, but everybody's into their phones. And it's like, yeah. like you said, it's like, you know, there's a real life happening here, but I think it's it's an addiction. And I also think with the past year, it's even more of an addiction mm -hmm. because I don't know about you, but last year, you know, when everything was going on, going on, you know, I was about, I was supposed to head to Paris to do a tour and write some stuff and record over there and finish the record and that stuff happened it scared the shit out of me i mean i didn't know i was worried about family members and my existence and what the world was going to be afterwards and if you notice people now are a little screwed up you know it, it people are angrier like, too yeah like if you look on airplanes and stuff yeah i'm fighting. scared to go on the airplane now <laughs> yeah i mean it's I really don't even go out at night too much. I mean, I know that sounds kind of weird, like I don't go out at night, but sometimes if I do, I get an Uber just so it's easier to navigate. And then yeah. I'm, I'm very, I go through like, do I really want to go here? Do I really want to? And it's not for a lack of enjoying an activity. It's just the fact that people are freaking bonkers. Mm-hmm. You know, and just being around, and I'm someone that, like, I feel, you know, a lot of musicians, you know, are like this as well, but we feel we're empaths, and we feel the world around us intensely, and unfortunately, there's no shutoff valve. So when you're experiencing something beautiful, it could be life-changing, but then again, when, you know, I've experienced some hate and some racism in times where the people didn't have to say anything, I felt it in my heart. You know, so it's, you know, it's, it's just a tricky world out there. It's like, you know, people need to get back into humanity and back into each other and having conversations because the greatest wealth we have around us are family and friends. You know, that's the love you carry in life with you. That's what mm -hmm. goes along with you. The rest of that stuff, you know, what's happening on TMZ or some weird, what you know, some weird news site or something making everybody that's already paranoid as hell even more paranoid and that's you know that's that's like a factor of control mm -hmm. they get people scared and they're scared and when people are scared they start falling for shit yeah that's why i try to avoid stuff like that <laughs> yeah and, and it's hard because the system is is set up like that but what we can do as individuals is just be positive beacons and just live by that and just have that as who you, you know, is your religion per se, how you roll. You know, it's like, we're never going to be perfect. I try to be a good person, but I'm human and I screw up. <clears throat> Sometimes I screw up a lot. I don't mean to. It just happens. My bad. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but the air is human, but it's just like, as long as you can catch that and you can be like, you know, can I be a better person than I was yesterday? 
Can I be a better friend? Can I be a better son? And I asked myself those questions before I really didn't. But that's one thing the past year has taught me is like time is more precious than we realize. You know, like in the, the first uh, song on the record is called Ticking Away. And it goes, do you seek the truth? When are you going to? Changes in the air. Does anybody care? This time is ticking away. You know, very simple in its thought, but profound in its weight. So. Yeah, I love that song. I think it kicks off the album very well with the, the adrenaline in it. Oh, uh, it's like, whoa, we're on the song. <laughs> yeah. uh, That's one of my favorites on this, the album. That's awesome. And I'm really <laughs> glad, Jen, you took the time to to listen to it because I know in your position you get a lot of stuff that comes across your desk and you know time is precious yes <laughs> right so you, you you pick the stuff out that moves that moves folks and you know I'm I'm, I'm glad you you know dug it enough to want to reach out to me and you know let us get this going and you know I and I I, I love Boston that's yeah kind, are you that's gonna good. come uh, perform here this, this, <laughs> this is my, my plan is unfortunately uh, just dealing with band and personnel and schedules and lack of vaccinations mm -hmm. and some folks not wanting to travel. I'm really focusing on just getting the band side really tight. And after the first of the year, when things have kind of calmed down, I plan on being out for like a year and a half. I'm going to really, because at that point, I'll have Nevolutionaries 1. And I think February or March is when we supposedly have it slated to release two. So I'll have two full records of great stuff, of uh, cool music to tour behind. So I'd rather take this time let people kind of settle into if they're going to do it or if they're not going to be vaccinated or if they're not because it's it's just tricky. I mean, I know a bunch of bands that are like big money making bands, which I'm not a big money making band, you know, hope to be one day, but mm -hmm. you know, you have members that are split in half. You know, they're divided. You know, these guys are vaccinated, these guys aren't. They don't want to, you know, they have to ride around with each other and people get sick and people are still dying from this shit, you know. And so I'd rather take the time to not have to cancel a schedule last minute because someone was a knucklehead and didn't want to get the test and that thing. Let things settle in. And then first after the first of the year, you'll see me. There's also, this, yeah. Where's this, oh, I forget. There's this place. Oh, I can't think. It's like the, it's like a three-layer club downstairs they have more established acts in the middle they have ah uh, i can't think of the name of this place but i love is it, it in uh cambridge yes is it the middle east club yes it's the yeah. middle east club <laughs> yes that's what i was there you go i love that spot they had, they had surprisingly really good food there too yeah they're good yeah that was that was awesome i played there uh few years back and, and I loved it loved it loved it yeah, that's one of my favorite venues <laughs> yeah we hung out with this I used to um work with a really awesome shoegaze band called the belt based out of North Carolina gotta check them out and they played with or we were on the road with um who was that I think the Brian Jonestown massacre huh. and played at some really cool club there another club i can't after you go to so many of them like the names are like <laughs> yeah <laughs> but this like the stage was kind of like on the side of the we walked in it was like a big bar upstairs place and then the stage was kind of like instead of being in the back they had a bar in the back but the stage was off to the left it was kind of weird huh. but, uh, yeah and uh was hanging out with uh, evan dando from the Lemonheads. he was hanging out so it was a fun night. I've always had a wonderful time every time I've been in Boston, especially going yeah. to those houses that have those little ass doorways. Because yeah, I guess people were short back in the day. And, and also you're looking at homes that were built 
some in like the late 1700s. Yeah, that's the, the best part about Boston is how historic it is. Yeah, that was that was the place, you know, like I, I was born in Philly. So between Boston and Philly, that's like you can't get more American than, than that if you think about it. That's yep. where <laughs> that's where everything, you know, none of this madness would be. <laughs> I'm just playing. No, I'm no. Playing. I love my country and I'm a voter. <laughs> No, that's true, though. Yeah. Well, I, I really appreciate your time, Christopher, chatting, and hopefully we can do it again sometime soon. Any Anytime you want to reach, anytime you want to chat, reach out, and I'll be available to you. Awesome. I appreciate you. <laughs> well, thanks again. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. You too, Jen. Take care and enjoy your day. <laughs>